The New England Patriots are back on the practice field for day seven of training camp. And let me tell you, Drake May, despite what the reports have been saying so far in training camp, Drake May had a good day of practice today. What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Colby, with Patriots Global. I appreciate you guys so, so, so much for clicking on yet again another video to hear me talk about some Patriots news. Like I said, today, we're recapping day seven of New England Patriots training camp. We have recapped quite literally every other day of Patriots camp so far. So if you're like, hey, I want to know what happened the other six days of Patriots training camp so far, then go ahead, check out the channel because we have an each individual for every day. We're also going to be talking a little bit later on about the sponsors of today's video over at Aura. If you guys are looking to support the channel or you're looking to keep yourself, your friends, your family safe, this is 100% the way to do it. But we'll talk about that a little later. Let's just hop right into today's video. You guys know how we do this. We're going to start with just some general notes before we break down each position. Starting here with guys that were absent or just not participating, Kendrick Bourne, Jaheim Bell, Jaheim Bell, who is out for a second consecutive day, definitely not good for him as he's fighting for a roster spot. Tyrone Wheatley, Cole Strange, Jake Andrews, Christian Barmore, Sione Takitaki, and Marte Mapu for the same, or for the most part, I should say, the same list as yesterday. Marte Mapu clearly dealing with some type of injury, but that has not been disclosed on what exactly that injury is. We did have a couple of players return today. That's David Andrews, Jabril Peppers, and most notably, Matthew freaking Judon returns to the practice field for the New England Patriots. As we know, because we've talked about this at nauseam at this point, and honestly, we talked about what happened at camp the other day uh, during a live stream. So if you guys want to go ahead and, and check out the, the recent Matthew Judon drama and rumors, go ahead and check out my recent live stream. But as we all know, he ends up holding in during practice. A lot of drama going on with him and the coaching staff and the the uh, the front office. Then he doesn't show up at camp two days ago. Patriots off yesterday. They come back on the practice field today. And not only is Matthew Judon at practice, but he's a full participant. You know, Gerard Mayo said that they met with Matthew Judon, had a really good conversation. We don't know what that was or what that means moving forward. But clearly, Judon is happy enough to be at practice and be a full participant. That's exactly what you want to hear. Shorts and shells today, so they weren't fully padded. That's probably why David Andrews returned. Like I said, David Andrews was absent or at least not participating the last two days. Ironically, those have also been padded practices. I wonder if they say, you're in your 30s, you're a veteran, you're a big piece to this offense. We don't want to have you potentially get injured because of how much we need you. During these padded practices, just don't worry about practicing. We know... What, you, what you're going to give to the team. We are relying on you. We know everything's going to be fine when the season comes along. Just take this as a Veterans Day. But a little bit of some scary news. Marcus Jones today left today with a trainer. Don't know what exactly it was. Don't know if this is anything too severe. We'll have to see if he's at camp tomorrow. Been a big piece of the Patriots defense so far. Has been playing really, really good in training camp too. Hopefully that's nothing serious. Patriots also get a little bit more banged up in the cornerback area, though Sean Wade also left practice early today. There was a little bit of another fight today. This is the third fight so far, if you even want to call this the fight, but it was between Hunter Henry and Anthony Jennings after an Antonio Gibson run. Things got cleared up pretty quickly. Nobody got booted out of practice. No, like, you know, no punches were thrown. Nobody was swinging or anything like that, but it sounds like it could have gotten there if it wasn't broken up as quickly as it was. But Let's move on here to actually let's do this one. Let's move on here to the quarterbacks. 11 on 11s today. Jacoby Brissett was five for eight. Drake May was five for six. Bailey Zappi was one for four. It was said today, too, that Drake May was leading the offense to start off the day. Seven on sevens, Jacoby Brissett. Three for five, Drake May two for four, and Joe Milton three for five. It was also said that both in 11 on 11s and seven on sevens, Drake May took a sack in both of those. He was the only quarterback who was sacked. I'm not freaking out about that. At the end of the day, he is still young. He is developing. This is his first kind of welcome to the NFL moment. Things are really fast for him right now. Everything's kind of speeding up. He's trying to get to a point where everything's going to slow down. So he's probably handing on to the ball a little bit longer, resulting in sacks. As he gets more comfortable in the offense, obviously, that will get better over time. Both Jacoby Brissett and Drake made today through, uh, through two touchdowns, through, or I should say, through two 
touchdowns. Try saying that five times fast on five attempts during red zone work today and seven on sevens. Joe Milton also another really good day for him. He looked really good today in red zone seven on sevens. He threw three touchdowns on five attempts to Jalen Polk. Kayshawn Booty and Javon Baker. Drake May also showed that he was much, much better in command today at the line of scrimmage, made a few different audibles, made one audible when the defense was going to blitz him, kind of switched it up to a screen play, and it was a really good change up by him. I mean, at the end of the play, Jacoby Brissett came over to Drake May, hyping him up, dabbing him up, and just having a good time. Overall, like I said, really, really good day for Drake May. Definitely compared to the last few days where it's reported that he struggled, had a couple of issues. Today was definitely one of the best practices that we've seen from Drake May. Moving on here, though, to the running backs. Antonio Gibson hauled in a touchdown pass today from Jacoby Brissett with Jawan Bentley and Kyle Duggar both in coverage. So definitely a good play by Antonio Gibson. Catching a pass between two of the Patriots' best defenders is not easy, but as we know, Antonio Gibson, a converted wide receiver to running back when he entered the league. So we know that he has good hands. Moving on here, though, to the wide receivers, though. Juju Smith-Schuster and Tyquan Thornton both with drops today. Jalen Polk had a touchdown catch, though, over Mikey Victor in one-on-ones. Uh, when it came to heavy personnel packages today with the offense, Jalen Polk worked as the only wide receiver on the field today. So we're talking probably like, what, 12, 13 personnel? Javon Baker also had a win today over Marcus Jones in one-on-ones. Javon Baker also had a nice contested touchdown grab on a ball from Bailey Zappi over Mikey Victor. KJ Osborne had a touchdown uh, touchdown catch from Drake May in seven-on-sevens. Really good sidearm ball from Drake May between two defenders and a really good contested catch also by KJ Osborne. Tyquan Thornton also still getting into the mix. He was undefeated today in his one-on-one -on -one matchups going 2-0. and oh. Both wins today also. Over Christian Gonzalez. So Tyquan Thornton, he's straining together some good practices. He also had two touchdowns in red zone seven on sevens. And then Kayshawn Booty had a great grab on a ball from Bailey Zappi today for a touchdown in 11 on 11s, full extension upwards. This is going to be a battle to the end. And quite honestly, might come down to which receivers are healthy when it comes down to which of these guys is going to make the 53-man roster. As for these, as for these tight ends, excuse me, Hunter Henry had uh, three touchdown grabs today in red zone seven on sevens. He also beat Jalen Hawkins for a touchdown in one on ones. Mitchell Wilcox is finally getting into the end zone a little bit here today. He beat Brendan Schooler for a touchdown in one on ones, and then also had a connection today with Drake May on a deep pass on an outbreaker route between two defenders. Now, before we get on to the offensive line and get onto the defense, let's his, let's listen to today's sponsor over at Aura. Hey guys, sorry to cut the video real quick, but I had a very important question that I had to ask you. And that is, have you ever Googled yourself or, or maybe a friend, maybe a family member Googled themselves and saw their private information being used? Maybe like their name, their phone number, their social security number, their address, maybe their credit card information. God knows I have. And the only reason that I was able to find that and take care of it was because of today's sponsor over at Aura. So what Aura is, is an identity protection service. And what they do is they go ahead for you so you don't got to do the hard work and they scour the internet for any of your information being used illegally that you didn't want them to use. The other great part is that they'll monitor your credit. They'll see if your phone number is being used to robocallers, which if you don't know what those guys are, they're essentially the ones that call you about five times a day. Because little do you know, these data brokers are actually trying to sell your information to robocallers, to spammers who are trying to find out your own personal information, such as where you live. So what Aura will do is they'll essentially send you an email or notification saying that, hey, Someone's trying to use your, your phone number. Someone's trying to access this information about you. Do you want us to delete it from the web? Fortunately, in today's society, a lot of threats that we all face on a day-to-day -day basis come online. And unfortunately, the scary part is that we can't always see it. Aura is going to come in, protect you, protect your family from threats that we can't see and we don't even know are coming. So, hey, look, you guys can go right ahead and let people exploit your own private information or you can go to the link in the description box below and pinned in the comment section below to go ahead and sign up for your 14-day free trial over at Aura. Yes, guys, make sure you support the sponsors that support the channel. That is quite literally one, if not the best way to support the channel. 
right now, free 14 day trial costs you guys absolutely nothing and goes a massive, massive, massive way at helping the channel out. And of course, more content like this to come your way when you guys support the sponsors. But anyway, moving on to the offensive line here. First team offensive line was a little bit different than it's been the last few days. Today, from left to right, starting with left tackle, Vidarian Low, then City So at uh, left guard, David Andrews at center, Mike Owenu at right guard, and Shuk Sikor for over at left tackle. For the most part, this is the same offensive line that we've seen over the last few days, except we didn't have Caden Wallace as our starting left tackle. You had Vidarian Low as your starting left tackle. To be completely honest with you, I am okay that the team is giving Vidarian Low some reps over at left tackle. I'm a much bigger fan if they're going to try him at a tackle position that they try him over on the left side and not the right side because Vidarian Lowe was horrifically bad. He was a revolving door at right tackle when he played for us during the 2023 season. But when he repped in over at left tackle, he actually looked significantly better. He actually looked like he had potential there. So I'm fine with them repping him over on the left side and just kind of seeing which matchup is the best. But right now it does sound like their best offensive line unit has been Caden Wallace at left tackle, City So at left guard, David Andrews at center, Mike Owenu at right guard, and then Chuksa for at right tackle. Right now, right tackle is probably more of a question than left tackle has been for the Patriots. But what we do know is that the interior of the offensive line is extremely stable, and I think we know what that unit is going to be. It's going to be City So at left guard. It's going to be David Andrews at center. It's going to be Michael Omenu at right guard. And worst comes to worst, Omenu goes out to right tackle, and then you have Layden Robinson kicking into right guard, which Robinson has also had a very good training camp so far. Now, speaking of Caden Wallace, he was the second team left tackle while Calvin Anderson was repping as the second team right tackle. Calvin Anderson did have to run a lap though for a false start. Moving on to the defense here, not much about the defensive line. Josh Uche had a sack today. Nothing about the linebackers, but for the corners, pass breakups, Jonathan Jones had one. Marcus Jones and Isaiah Bolden had one. Marco Wilson had a pair of wins today in one-on-ones. Isaiah Bolden also had a pair of wins today in one-on-ones. And then Marcellus Dial, really the first thing we've heard about Marcellus Dial, the Patriots six-round pick. All training camp. He mixed in a lot more with the starters today. Didn't hear anything bad about him. Didn't hear anything good either. I'm going to be really, really interested to see how he performs during the preseason, just how much the Patriots use him, because that'll be a sign on does he make the roster, does he not. Spoiler alert, right now, I have him off just because he's done quite literally nothing. But moving on here to the safeties, pass breakups. Kyle Duggar had one. He continues to show out during training camp. Brennan Schooler had one as he still reps with the first team defense. And Del Pettis also, or Del Pettis also had one. Lastly, for today, special teams on field goals to end practice. They hit from 32, 35, 39, and 49. Chad Rylan went a perfect four for four, while Joey Sly went three for four with a miss from 39. Right now, Chad Rylan is still winning the training camp battle for kicker. We know that Joey Sly was definitely the better kicker during spring practices, OTAs, and mini camp. But right now in training camp, it's definitely Chad Ryland who's winning. And this is going to come down to how these guys perform, you know, towards the end of training camp, how they perform in joint practice with the Eagles, and then how they perform in the preseason to figure out which guy is going to be the best option. Right now, it really is a tie. Football's what have you done for me lately? And I think the team is going to want to see who plays the best when the pressure's on? Who plays the best when it is during a live game and you're not going up against your own team? So this is coming down to the wire, and it's going to be really interesting to see which kicker ends up getting the nod here. As for your kick returners today, you had Antonio Gibson, KJ Osborne, Jalen Rager, and Marcus Jones. This was the, also the first day that we saw the Patriots fully practice a kickoff drill. And then Javon Baker today also doing some work as a gunner on special teams. So really seems like they're trying to get these rookies acclimated, not just offensively, but also here with special teams. That is going to recap, though, day seven of New England Patriots training camp. What are your guys' thoughts? What are your biggest takeaways for me? Another great day. Another great day for Javon Baker. And honestly, this wide receiver court is just a day and night difference from what it was last year. The Patriots had one deep threat last year at wide receiver throughout training camp. 
and that was Devontae Parker. It seems like they have five different guys who are making plays downfield, and I'm really excited to see what this wide receiver can, court can do this upcoming season, but I'm even more excited to see what this wide, receiver's, wide receiver core is going to look like during 53-man roster cutdowns, but what are your guys' thoughts? Let me know in the comment section below. Remember to leave a big like on this video and subscribe to the channel for all of your New England Patriots news. Appreciate you guys so, so, so much for watching, and of course, never forget, go Pats.